South China Morning Post, 5th of July 2023, Indonesia, Saudi Arabia, and Egypt want to join the Chinese debt trap, so India is suspicious of China's BRICS expansion push. Most governments, desperate for cash and economic expansion, have fallen into the Chinese debt trap. India has avoided being debt trapped by China thanks to the BRI. Analysts claim that India is particularly wary of the expansion plan among the BRICS bloc of big emerging countries because there is some skepticism about the group's potential to counter existing regional alliances. Argentina, Egypt, Indonesia, the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Algeria, Bangladesh, and Iran will be the frontrunners to join the BRICS group when it meets in Johannesburg for a leadership meeting next month. Other potential members include Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, and Egypt. Senior officials began a three-day meeting on Tuesday, and it was anticipated that the expansion request would be on the agenda. China wants the BRICS, intended to promote peace, security, development, and cooperation, to comprise 43% of the world's population, 26% of its land area, and roughly 30% of the global economy. BRICS was once considered a loose organization of several emerging economies. However, Indian Foreign Minister Subramanya Yamjayashankar stated last month that the process was still a work in progress, citing the need to consider the standards, criteria, and procedures of what an expanded grouping would entail. China had stated last year that it wanted the bloc to begin working on admitting new members. When asked to what extent an expansion is in New Delhi's interest, Oliver Stunkel, an associate professor of international affairs at Funda São Getúlio of Argus University in Brazil, indicated some uncertainty within India. Stunkel said China was the largest supporter of an expanded BRICS, followed by Russia. I think we'd have to wait and see if there'd be any significant movements in that direction, Stunkel said. India and Brazil, on the other hand, were a little concerned about losing influence in a large grouping, he continued. According to Stunkel, the bloc had already established itself as a counterweight to the West and an alternative model to the influential Group of Seven, which consists of Britain, Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, and the United States. The new members would largely join to be closer to China and not to Brazil or India, Stunkel said. According to Stunkel, no matter whether there will be an expansion, the five BRICS nations currently have a sizable impact in their respective regions. Anu Anwar, a fellow at the Faculty of Arts and Sciences at Harvard University, claimed that India's recent inclination toward the West demonstrated that it was an outlier in the BRICS, which implies it makes sense for other members to seek to extend the group. Delhi has recently increased its commercial, military, and technological ties with the US, Japan, Australia, and the EU. It has been an active member of the Quad Security Alliance, producing vaccines for the Indo-Pacific area during the epidemic. In recent years, the Quad, consisting of Australia, Japan, and the US, has been reactivated in reaction to China's expanding global influence. According to Anwar, it is doubtful that the BRICS will replace the G7 because nearly all First World nations are either NATO members or have other military relationships with the US. None of the BRICS members have a military alliance, and it is doubtful to form one soon, said Anwar, who also noted that such an alliance was essential to establishing a new global order. Although adding a few middle powers and regional actors to the membership could significantly alter the balance of power on the planet, it is unlikely to help create a new international system. China and Russia have a clear interest in establishing a new international order, according to Gunter Mayhold, deputy director of the German Institute for International and Security Affairs. Mayhold noted that Brazil, India, and South Africa were more interested in maintaining the status quo than expanding the BRICS. They are together fostering the enlargement of BRICS to legitimize this aspiration, Mayhold stated. According to Mayhold, China's desire to grow the organization and extend its clout could be counterproductive since it could spark opposition from other BRICS members and make the already loosely organized body increasingly harder to manage. In addition to the strained relations between China and India over border disputes, Mayhold alluded to the fight for increased regional and global influence. It might also generate more internal rivalries she said. As China alone accounted for two-thirds of the BRICS GDP, Shirley Ziyu, a senior practitioner fellow at the Harvard Kennedy School's Ash Center, claimed that an expanded BRICS would reflect the bloc's strength in Beijing's growing influence. China will become the rulemaker as more states sign on to a shared international framework, 
you said, adding that any nation in such a position would have enormous power in the decades to come. You, who is also the director of the China-Africa Initiative at the London School of Economics, added that, unlike Western blocs, the BRICS countries were united by a shared desire to reform the current international system to take emerging economies' needs for development into account. Utilizing the Chinese debt trap to finance development loans from BRI. The new construction bank, NDB, established in 2015 by the BRICS nations, is comparable to the China-led Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank in that it aims to finance infrastructure construction in emerging economies. According to its website, the NDB is given loans totaling 33 billion US dollars to more than 96 projects inside the five founding member nations since it was founded. At the bank's annual meeting in May, Chinese Vice Premier Ding Xiaoxiang stated that Beijing remained committed to developing the NDB into an open international bank. He also noted that the NDB was created to better assist emerging economies by financing more sustainable infrastructural projects. Egypt, the UAE, and Bangladesh have just been admitted as new members of the NDB. Saudi Arabia is in talks to join, and Uruguay is in the process of doing so. Given the bank's recent expansion, other countries will probably join soon, according to Stunkel, who also noted that the NDB could compete with the influence of Western-dominated international institutions like the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund. It already does so, Stunkel asserted pointing out that a more potent and impactful NDB was in high demand throughout the developing world. Where the impact of the BRICS grouping is most noticeable, and the potential for an NDB expansion is probably greatest. Anwar countered that the NDB could now not take the position of the World Bank in the IMF due to its current assets and regions of operation and only served a supporting function. The historic role of, the World Bank in the IMF, as global financial market regulators and stabilizers will not be obliterated by new membership. He added. Still, it will bring in more funds and broaden the field of action in key infrastructure areas.